Here in America, the most progressive nation in the world, we are keenly aware of an increasing need for higher learning among our young people. To appreciate the active efforts toward this achievement, it is befitting to visit a modern, growing institution of higher learning, such as the University of Florida. People are sometimes surprised to find out that a university as relatively young as UF is listed on the National Register of Historic Places, when in fact in 1906 it opened its doors to 102 students, boys of old Florida, and two unfinished buildings. So it had a very small beginning. When uh, the school was established, the architect was Rudolph Weaver. Well, Rudolph Weaver in the 1920s was hired to be the campus architect. And at the same time, he established the program here. So what we're celebrating with our 90th birthday here. And so from the very beginning, we've been involved as, as a college uh, with the design of the campus. It's, been, it's in our DNA at DCP uh, to be a part of this. The University of Florida history certainly is full of interesting stories after World War II when the population of the university, which had gone down to a low of around 600 during the war, suddenly exploded to around 10,000 with the GI Bill and the beginning of the Coeducation Act, such that women arrived on campus full time. In that era, there was a huge need for new buildings with this explosion of the population on campus. Not only were there four times as many permanent structures built as had been built in the entire 40 years of the history of the campus before, but also there were numerous additions and temporary buildings brought in. And these temporary buildings often from closed military establishments and uh, the Flavettes, as they were known, probably became the most popular. They provided housing for Florida veterans, thus the Flavettes. And in 1953, the tower that we know as the Century Tower was built. Uh, that's the funny part because how did it, a campus that was built in 1906 get a cent Century Tower in 1953? Well, it turns out that President J.J. Tigert, uh, the third president of the university, was not at all happy about being forever the last person in a processional where the presidents were lined up according to the origin date of their university. And of course, 1905-06 was a very late date in the history of universities. So, he looked for a solution and found one of the roots of the University of Florida in the East Florida Seminary, which was opened in 1853. So this root of the university became the founding date of the university. And thus, in 1953, we were able to have the centennial and build the Century Tower. The campus continued to evolve and change and adapt to new ideas about architecture, new styles that have become popular. Um, one of the famous examples, for years they required all buildings to have orange tile roofs, right? the old historic orange tile roofs. When they designed Little Hall, the architects didn't want to put an orange tile roof on this new modern building. And so they showed renderings of the building that didn't show the roof. and then. As they were getting ready to start, the, the, um, the state realized that there was not an orange roof on this building. So they went back and they tried to figure out how to put one on it, and they couldn't figure out how to do it in the budget. So actually, Little Hall was the first building, um, first campus uh, classroom building that did not have orange tile on the roof. Today, we have one of the most remarkable collections of uh, campus history of any large public institution in the United States where the buildings have been both preserved and are also an expression in themselves of this evolution over time, keeping the compatibility and at the same time expressing their own era.
I think the uh, really more remarkable thing is the fact that DCP encompasses all the aspects of the built environment, planning, architecture, interior design, landscape architecture, and building construction. And this is relatively unique in the United States. The, the fact that we are an institution that has grown, and, and I don't mean grown just gotten bigger, which we have certainly, but we've grown in so many ways in terms of the, the way we look at education, um, the way we've adapted to society's changes, um, and that here we are, 90 years later, we're still trying to be on the cutting edge in the forefront of developments in, in our various disciplines. Uh, we're still trying to make a difference in our communities, in our state. 90 years is pretty good. <laughs>